All right, I'm back. So basically uh, we've had a huge heat wave here. So everybody in the house has migrated to the uh, living room where it's the coolest room in the house. Uh, and subsequently I was unable to do any, um, any analysis because there were always other people around living their general lives, but I'm back now. So we're starting off here. Um, we are now about 47 minutes in and we'll see which see which event this is we're gonna see how it goes now I don't know who this is uh, this looks like it's probably a, a Chinese crew or something this looks like Thames we will uh, see how it goes here off the start there we go okay Mitsubishi there you go Japan that's where they're from all right well last I'll give my thoughts as we continue down all right, so we're still pretty close to the uh, start of the race here. We're just going to mute it. And we're just going to watch the uh, Mitsubishi crew. Let's see here. Come in and, oh, we have some some timing issues. Not terrible, but look at this. We're sort of rowing these blades in. We'll just try to get this on the next one. Again, we see we're probably a little out of time here. So that's not good. But look at that, rowing that in, right? Rowing that in rather than taking the catch and placing it as we get there we get there and then we're driving opening up and boom we push that in compare that to something like this here where they take the catch bang a little more quickly right boom a little backsplash there but this guy rowing it in so he's not getting as much grab right off the start as he should there again we see these guys here around him boom see how they move down this guy's just hanging there right so when i talk about quick hands at the catch this is kind of what i'm talking about is when we get there, we can see that blade just either hang around, where this guy's not really doing too much to change that blade, or we can get those hands lifting. And this guy's doing a pretty good job. Notice how the body here doesn't move, right? So when we talk about, or when I talk about hinging from the shoulder and lifting the hands but not lifting with the body, we look at this guy here. See there, right? Boom, that's pretty good. The body's not really changing. He's not taking that catch with the body. Here, the body's not moving. Look at that, that's pretty stable, right? But a lot of times you'll see that lift and when that blade starts dropping to the water, the body, the shoulders lift up, right? And that's taking the catch with the body. We don't wanna do that. We wanna hold that body strong. We wanna lift the hands, place the blade in the water, then push away. But because this guy here was so late, look at that, he just rows it in and the water's getting pushed forward. You can see how the water's pushing forward rather than grabbing it and then driving it away, locking that blade in and pushing the boat past. That's not happening, right? See again, look at that guy. He just like kind of hangs there waiting while these guys are getting going. See? But watch, watch how that blades just push into the water there a little bit. Push it into the water rather than grab the water and then drive past. So that's something that we don't like to see. Right? We want to see that blade grab it, lock in, and then drive the boat past. All right, so now we're a little further down the course. We can see here, to me, there's some height problems. There's some alignment problems with the blades. This, again, is not something that I'm a huge, huge fan of, is that German rigging, that bucket rigging. And look, we look at the angles of the bodies here. So there's not a unified line where everybody's kind of doing the same thing, right, in the same ways. So I think there's some alignment issues. I think there's some blade timing issues and blade synchronicity issues. Um, it's not something that I generally like to see now. These, Thames always puts out fast crews. So these guys here are gonna be doing okay. Right? They're gonna be putting down good power. They're gonna move fast. But again, I think they could be, a, they could be sharper than they are. Right? See, look at this. Look at the difference on the blade angles here from the people that are side by side. See, look, we got some timing issues there. Uh, seven seat here could be buried a little bit earlier. This here, see, notice here, you know, he's taking this with the arms already. He's taking that, boom, boom. You can kind of see the arm taking the weight. I think he should hold that off just a little bit longer. It's not terrible. It's not terrible, but 
I'd like to see a little more uniformity. When you get to the uh, the very, very best crews, I think would look a little bit more put together than this crew. But I think they will probably perform well because Thames always has fast crews. I'm just not sold that they are going to be the premier boat in this event. All right, so this here's an overhead shot. And what I want to see here is the uh, water coming up the shaft of the blade. Because if we look here, see, look at this, right? When we talk about the unity here, look at how these blades are kind of not synchronized, right? Look at this. The angles are not quite synchronized. So I, I'm not a big fan of that. It's not like it's a huge, like, it's not a huge dis difference. It's not a huge discrepancy, but it is a discrepancy. Uh, but that's not what I wanted to, want to talk about. This is what I wanted to talk about. If we look at uh, two seat here versus uh, four five seat, right? Look at how much this water comes up here. Right? So that's a lot of drag. See, look at this though. Again, different angles on the blades. It's just not quite as unified and tight as I would like. And this is why I don't like the this type of rig style. I just think it's harder to get your blades all synchronized. It's harder to get the people working together in a, uh, in a nice, solid fashion. Uh, but this kind of stuff here worries me. I see this amount of uh, drag coming up the shaft. And to me, that's going to slow you down over time. When you come up against the best crews, that's going to be an issue. All right, so this is Princeton B versus Durham A. Durham A is the far one. And this is in the um, Temple Temple Challenge Cup. So these guys here are up against it because obviously they're a B crew versus an A crew. It's going to be tough. And they're not doing themselves a lot of favors here again. With Look at the, the difference in angles here. See this guy looks like he's pulling with the upper body a little bit. This guy's hanging maybe a little bit more. Right. Look at the difference in when blades are extracting. This one's still super deep, pushing a lot of water. This one's halfway out. So we've got a lot of discrepancy here and not so much heat now. I touched on this before and I've touched on this uh, in other videos as well. Look at how much drag they're creating on the shafts of these blades. You've got, look at this. Look at that, right? You've got to keep these things more shallow. I understand it's the start. You're really jacked up with all the adrenaline and you're pushing those blades into the water, but you have to keep them more shallow. You cannot create that amount of drag, especially when you're up against a crew that's an A crew and you're a B crew. You have to be sharp, sharp, sharp like a tack, okay? These guys are not. We've got too much depth, too much drag. That's going to slow this boat down. It's going to make them really behind the eight ball going against this Durham crew. So Durham looks pretty good coming through here so far. Uh, this guy here, as we're passing the camera, notice the outside shoulder. There's some tension there. We see that shoulder raising again. I'm going to talk about uh, keep as much distance between the ear and the shoulder as possible. See this guy? Heads up, shoulders low. This guy, look at that. Look how tight this is. Even though these are both the outside shoulders, here's a, the comparable guy who's on the same side. See that outside shoulder? Nice and relaxed. Here is very tense. That's going to put a lot of strain on these muscles here, the upper shoulder muscles. Why not take that energy, use it into the lats and stuff to really draw it through. Let this hang just very loose through. Think about pulling that line very horizontal through the sternum area, or just below the sternum area, and really feeling these blades here, or these uh, muscles here, squeeze back around this spine. That use of energy is going to be far more effective at propelling the boat forward. All right, what I'm gonna talk about here is um, something that I think I actually covered in my previous video, which I did not post because I got all messed up on hitting the keys and it actually was just a, a really big disaster. But I don't wanna go back and rewatch the 46 minutes of it. And, um, and also these are supposed to be my unscripted uh, first impression uh, feelings about these races. So that sort of defeats the purpose. So to any people who watch it and you are in there uh, you can uh, send me a message or something and i may do a specific analysis of your particular crew but otherwise i'm not gonna repost that video but here's what i'm talking about this is why for me you want to keep the hands as close to the end of the blade as possible i like two thumbs distance apart and here's why let's look at this guy here with the big bent arm on the inside okay. look at this boom when he first engages look at how that arm straightens out so the whole time that that arm is straightening out, there is no connection 
on this part of the stroke. So you're getting power from here, but you're not getting any connection and power from here, right? Because this is just effectively acting as a shock absorber. It's opening up, which means you're not getting any, um, I wanna say any draw on this blade, even though you're not really drawing the blade to you so much as you're just moving the boat past the blade, but hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Um, if I grab, if I grab the edge of my desk, okay, and my arm is bent, and then I just lay back and straighten out my arm, I haven't moved the desk at all. And then if I continue going back, it's going to drag the, the desk with me, okay? Likewise, if I keep that arm bent and I walk backwards, it is going to drag the desk to me, but it's going to be using my bicep because to hold that bent arm position, I have to use my bicep, which is a very ineffective, weak muscle for this kind of sport. So because we see his arm opening up, that's good. He's not putting the weight on the bicep, but he's not having that desk come with him. So he's letting this side of his body get overtaxed rather than spreading that effort out amongst both sides of the body, right? And that's going to tax the outside arm. So as we come through, see how it opens up. Now he gets connection here and then he can draw it through. He goes up again. We've got that bent arm. See, look at this guy. This guy here, he's got much closer hands. And notice this arm stays more straight. So he's going to get more connection than this. So whoever's three seat, this is good. He's got both hands out there. So he's going to get very good pry. Right? The amount of, of force that he's going to be able to get to the end of the blade, just like on that, um, that crowbar. When he jams it into the door, this guy's trying to maximize the leverage. This guy's not quite. See that bent arm? Now watch, it's going to straighten out. Oh, so no connection, now connection, and now it's through. So we want that instant connection. So good job here by 3C as a comparison to 5C, um, who I think needs to get that arm out a little bit more, straighten it up, and get that connection right from the beginning point. All right, so now we're going to look at this part here, and we're going to watch his shoulder, his outside shoulder. And watch how when he comes through, that shoulder tenses up as he draws it through, right? See right there, right there, boom. See how there it takes that tension, it kind of comes up a little bit, and then it comes through and there, boom. Now the shoulder relaxes again as he does this extraction. We want to keep that shoulder nice and relaxed all the way through until and including the extraction, right? Look at this here, right? See that's starting to raise, that shoulder's starting to raise, and it's not that it's just coming towards us. It's that it's raising up in the socket a little bit, which means we're just taking too much of that strain right here on the upper shoulder. We need to let that shoulder hang, hang forward in the socket and low in the socket. That's going to be a better transference of power and it's going to save that energy from being used up here, put it into these lower muscles, which are going to actually propel the boat. All right, so here's Diamond Jubilee uh, Skulls. And this guy here is fast off the start. So let's look at this here. Listen to them call the start here. You'll hear it go and boom, this guy just goes. We'll just come back. Oh, we missed it, okay. And go, boom, look how fast that guy is off the uh, blocks. That was freaking. here, I'll just mute this. That was well-timed. But, here we go, we're gonna back this up. Okay, so we're just going to watch this close guy here. Boom. That's not bad, right? See, he's not really drawing too much with the arms right away. He's just letting the stroke develop a little bit. I don't know how well he's going to do. I haven't seen it. We are a little tense in the shoulders, but he's trying to keep these arms long. So he's letting those strokes complete. See, and he draws it pretty decently to the body. This guy here is a little shorter. He's a little bit more upper body, I think. Um, see, look at that. Those are... Those are very, very short strokes. Those look very short. Right? If we start that, boom, look at that. Just very short, choppy, boom, boom, boom. I'm not I'm not necessarily a huge fan of this as much as I am of this. Again, I don't know how it's gonna pay off as they go down, and I don't actually think this is the junior women's quad skulls. Uh, so I think something was done incorrectly there, but we'll see. So we'll see how this continues down the way. I think this guy here went off very quick off the draw, good reaction speed. But I think he's just a little bit short, choppy, 
uh, and jerky. A little jerky for my taste getting out of the box. Okay, so we're still very, very close to the uh, beginning. This guy should be sitting up taller, right? Push that spine forward, see how rounded this is. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that. And again, he's still taking some uh, strain here, but, and, and look at how much body motion there is, right? So we wanna think of the shoulder to hip angle. When we start that drive, the first bunch of drive is gonna hold that shoulder hip angle, but we can see that angle is changing right from the beginning. So we're losing power right there. And then we're gonna look at his extraction here. So look at this extraction, boom, that blade never left the water. This far one never left the water. They just get about halfway out and then they lay down, they drag, sort of splat on top of the water and then they come through. And notice, because he didn't have them set, because he didn't get that height, look at the hand height here. And now, at this point here, watch the hands. Boom, boom, boom. Look how much vertical change there is there. Right? Look how much vertical change there is. And this here's an issue, okay? This is an issue. Now, he might be rigged a certain way, so I, you know, I will say this with a grain of salt, but I'm fairly confident. And this is something we see with uh, Emma Twig as well that, that drives me crazy, and I will probably do a video on her. Look at the hands. Which hand is higher? We want that left hand higher. But because we get to a point where suddenly the hands are too high and we have to roll those knuckles and push it down to get the height on the blades, we now end up with the left hand underneath the right hand, which means the boat's probably gonna have some roll to it, which means that we're gonna be unstable, which means that once the blades are buried, we have to use the first part of the stroke to actually get the blades locked in and then push away. And again, we see, look at how much body is being moved. And the blades aren't actually really at their maximum um, movement ability, the maximum lock-in till about here, because that's still sort of getting the positional stuff sorted out. Boom, now we're kind of getting right there is about where we get where the blades are locked in. The boat's gonna be stable and we'll be able to maximize our power. He's halfway through the leg drive. He's got shrugged shoulders. He's opened up that body angle. So he's done a lot of things that have lost speed. This guy's moving pretty good. We'll see how it plays out as we go down the uh, waterway. Okay, so even this guy here now, he's got a significant lead. We come up here, look at the extraction. Okay, this kind of stuff really bothers me because it's not a difficult change to make. It's not tough to improve this but look at that he's already feathering the blades only halfway out splat down on the water and we see that little splash of water here right splash because it just smacked on the water get the blade clear push it out like push the hands down get the blade out of the water let the boat run that's all you have to do and you're gonna put basically zero percent more energy into doing that and you're gonna get a much faster better running boat right? see even here and this, I try to look at it and describe it to people that I coach like in this manner. Um, we almost, when we're coming out of the bow through our extraction process, we want to think of almost pivoting up and over the hips. So we've got our layback here. We come up and over the hips rather than straight forward kind of through the hips. And then we want to use our body weight to lay down onto the handles. And if we have our body weight laying on the handles, we don't really have to pull the handles down because the weight of the body is going to keep those handles down which is going to keep the blades up off the water so we use sort of the, the weight of our body and the body angle the good use of body angles coming out of bow to put those handles in a position where the spoons are going to be doing something very good for us and beneficial but if we watch this here it's a little bit more see there again we had to see some hand height change opening early some tension here as well. Look at this, splat down on the ground or on the water. And then here he just kind of, because there's no tallness here, he just sort of goes forward. Notice how the wrist is below the handle. I like the wrist to be up here above the handle. That means then that we are gonna have that power coming down on top of the handle to push that handle down rather than behind the handle where we're not using the hands to pull the handles down to get them off the water. This way we have to pull them down. The other way we're just using our body weight driving the handle down if that makes sense okay here he is at the extraction i don't like seeing this much space between the body and the handles uh, to me this means that you are effectively working behind your um, behind your handles okay so 
we're going to end up using more of the arms to pull that in rather than the body. I would, if it was me, I'd probably try to change the rigging in some way, even maybe just move his feet uh, up a couple notches, one or two notches, to bring his body a little closer to the handle. Some people don't like that because they feel that they are trapped. But as long as you have good, quick hands and you keep a nice, tall body, you can get very close to those handles and still be able to, uh, to get a good, clean release. By getting a little closer here, you're going to be able to get more power, more, um, more oomph out of these big, strong back muscles, the lats, deltoids, etc., or trapezius, lats and trapezius. It's going to be a, uh, it's going to just give you a little more connection, a little more power at the end of the blade. All right, Thames Challenge Cup. We've got two eights. They have called attention. Uh, and what do I see? Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, look at this. Blade out, blade out, blade out, blade out, blade out, blade out. Attention to detail is not uh, striking me as super spectacular from both of these crews. I think they need to make sure that they sit tall, lift the hands, lock the blades in, get that good grab as you start going. Okay, this is literally seconds after I hit pause there. Uh, and I don't know what these crews are. We will see how it goes. But my initial thought is I'm not holding out a ton of hope for these guys to win. Because when we see this here, they say go and boom. Look at how much this stroke seat here is just heaving with these arms. Look at this. That is so much upper body. And that is just going to poop those arms out. Right? So I just see that and I see that from the stroke seat who, in my opinion, should be one of your most solid rowers. They should be very, very technically sound because they're setting the stroke for everybody else. And if they do not set a good example, other people are more likely to uh, fall down on the job, so to speak. They're, they're not going to have that visual image getting transferred from person to person to person to really lock it in. Now, that's obviously not 100%. You can have a fantastic seven seat who really is very, very sharp, very technically sound. And this guy does a good job holding the arms off. Look at that. That was very sound. So this guy now has a good image. But I just, to me, it's not something I like to see. I, I think that, uh, I think it just sets an example that I do not want my crew following. So right away, right off the bat, I don't even know who these crews are yet. Uh, I'm not sold on these guys they could still come back and absolutely dominate this race who knows okay and these are the crews at city of bristol over here uh munchner from germany so these guys are probably gonna be fast they wouldn't come all the way from germany if they were slow so we'll see how it plays out all right so as we progress down it seems that uh you know shows what i know because these guys are absolutely dominating but again we look and there's some slight discrepancies here on blade length blade probably blade angle at the catch one thing they do pretty good is uh, if you've seen some other videos that i've done i talk about the angles of the people in the boat right and how um how you want to see a fairly straight line and if they separate it's kind of like teeth on a saw where you could drop a pin and it'll slide through whereas if you get a, a line that looks all messy and you get like clumps of bodies together and clumps of bodies with gaps that's never a good thing because it means people are doing different stuff. I do think some of these people here should keep their outside shoulder up a little bit more. Uh, but when we, when we hit play, notice the bodies aren't moving far out of that line. This is very, very inside the boat, very together that way. Whereas if we look back here, you can see these lines and the people kind of swaying back and forth a little bit more. Right? So this here is going to be a more unified drive of power down the line of the boat to move it in that horizontal manner. Even though we've got some slight discrepancies on blade entry uh, angles and the timing is, uh, it's good, it's good, but it's not exact, right? But then we look at this boat here, we're gonna see much more uh, issues with timing and stuff. The blades just aren't super, super snug together. This boat looks much, much better, right? So I'm guessing if this guy's still pulling the arms early, then he, uh, yeah, I think it looks like he kind of is from this angle. I'd like to see him hold that arm off. I think he's going to be able to get more uh, power, more power transfer, and he's not going to poop out as much. Eh, but he's might, he might be doing better now. He might be doing better. So there you go. So these guys, though, are looking pretty solid, pretty together. Uh, there you go. All right, so now we're going to watch this boat here a little bit. And to me... 
then uh, we are recording. Okay, so that's good. So to me, when I see a boat like this, I think, oh, what a miserable experience. Okay. And that's not meant to sound mean to these guys, but if we just watch the boat and how much body roll there is on this boat, okay? Look at this. Look at that. Oh, it's down. It's like wobbling. See, look at that. As you get to the catch, whoop, wobbling. What a miserable experience. Now, when we look at that and we sort of go back to what we were talking about with the bodies moving side to side more compared to the other boat, this is what happens. That boat is going to start rolling. And... Then people start making adjustments and even come through through the drive. Look at the difference in blade angles. That's not going to help stability. Look at this. Different timings of release because this blade here vanishes. See this one here? Boom. So this guy's already dropping the handle down. This, these guys are still drawing it in. Look at the difference on the angles of blades over here. This is all stuff that plays into creating this in, unstable boat, this instability. Look at this. Right? Look at the difference in these angles, okay? Look at this. Okay? So this is something that needs to be dealt with. Basically, you want to start with the bodies. The bodies must be in alignment. The bodies must be doing the same thing. That is your base. That is your foundation. And if that is unstable, just like a house, if you have a house that looks fantastic, it's built beautifully, but the foundation is weak, that house can fall over at any time. Same thing here. The bodies are the stability. That is your foundation. You have to have good, solid mechanics with everybody doing the same thing and everybody doing the right thing. Now, once you've got that, then you can work on all the blade work. The blade work is secondary. Okay? This is something then that you can sharpen up. But until these bodies get resolved, then working on blade work is going to be uh, a bit of a futile issue because you're always going to have to make adjustments with those blades to counter the instability that the bodies are creating so when i see a boat moving like this that's why i say this is a well that would be a miserable experience to me and i don't want to be in a miserable boat i don't want to coach people in a miserable boat so i would say that's it we're taking this thing back to basics and we're just going to work on body mechanics body mechanics body mechanics until it is so solid in that boat then now we can move out to what's going on with the blades. So, uh, and who knows, some of these people may not like doing it because a lot of times athletes don't like doing those, um, they don't like going back to the basics in that way because, you know, we're athletes. When we're out there, we want to go hard. People want to really heave away on it and get a good workout and everything. But if you don't put in the time to get the basics down, you're never going to, um, you're never going to raise the ceiling of where your boat can perform. All right, so this is Sagatuck versus Ship Lake. This is the PE Cup. Uh, junior men's eights, I, they've called attention. I don't like this here. I have every confidence that Ship Lake is going to perform very well. Uh, I don't know anything about Sagatuck. They're from the U.S., so they will probably be fast, but my money would still be on these guys because... Uh, Ship Lake always turns out very fast crews, although I do not like this attention to detail from them. Whereas when we heard attention, we saw some of these blades bury, which I do like. Now, looking at Strokes Heat, I like this position. He's very tall, his shoulders are uh, relaxed, he's got a good hang on the blade. This guy here looks, notice how he's much more scrunched up, right, compared to this. I like this as a starting position much more than I like this. I think this here is too low. You should be able to kick those hips back a little bit, get on those sit bones straight in the back haul yourself up a little bit because my guess is that this guy could actually get some height just by sitting a little bit more upright on the hips and by straightening of that back that's going to push him a little taller which means you're going to actually have longer leverage on that blade so when i see people like sit like this that you know that to me seems you're you're just you're scrunched up and i would guess it might be an issue with actually how he's sitting on the seat that does not mean that is the issue it's just one of the first things i I would look at when I see people in this position here. These guys are very tall. These guys look like they've got good posture. This guy could probably pivot forward more. Uh, and again, that could be a flexibility or it could be a seating issue. Um, we'll see how it plays out. Okay, we're gonna just watch these guys here go by. And what I wanna look at is how tall these ship lake guys are and how you can really just see how it pries the blade through the water, right? It pries the boat past the blade, as the case is but they really are levering it very well. Whereas these guys here, 
again, it just seems like a shorter boat. Like, not shorter from bow to stern, but shorter from top to bottom. Uh, and it's, people just aren't as tall. They're not as open up. So that's what we're going to watch here as it goes by. See, look how tall this boat looks. And look at that one there. See here, we're scrunched over. We're kind of scrunched up. We're scrunched up here, right? And this boat, just look, the connection that they get because those bodies are tall, those uh, torsos are very strong and connected. It pries the boat past. There's no, um, no give in these bodies. These bodies are presenting a very, very good platform against which the legs can drive that power. That's what we want. When we have these folded over bodies a lot of times, that fold, that bend in the bodies, that's going to absorb a lot of that power. The five seat also in this boat here is doing, looks a little weird, it almost looks like he's shooting the slide or something here a bit. See, it, look, at, look at how slippy that looks at the catch for him. See there, that first bit right there. Boom, right there. It just looks like it slips. It, there's no, and that to me, that's that rounding. That's that scrunched down. There's no connection, right? Whereas if we were to look at these guys here, from the moment it goes on, that body is connected. If we were to sort of take the, all their tops off, you would see the lats here just take that weight. You would see them flex and grab against the weight that it's doing. Here we wouldn't see that as much because the body is absorbing the power rather than bracing against that power and transferring it through to the end of the blade. Okay, now this here is just a little bit further down, but look, when I'm talking about crew boats and we want unity on crew boats, now we're gonna see obviously there's a bit of a gap here, which is no good. But look at when these blades start squaring, how they square together at the same level that they're pretty much on. Boom, when they hit the water, pretty much at the same time. This looks tight. This is why I say ship lake crews always look good. See, we got a little bit of discrepancy on those blade heights. So three seats a little bit late on some of these, but that's pretty, that's pretty tight. Look at this, right? Like this is some pretty solid stuff. And again, look at this. They're looking pretty relaxed. Look at the shoulder here. Look at this, that shoulder is, even though that's the outside shoulder, that's hanging low in the socket. And then he draws through and you can see the shoulder move past the body there. Faces are looking pretty relaxed. This is nice. This is very, very good. Um, this is very nice rowing from this high school crew, right? Very relaxed. This is what we wanna see. The more relaxed you are, the more you can feel what that boat's doing and the more that boat is going to do nice things, right? When we start tensing, we can't feel what's going on and the boat has more bad things start happening. So it's a double hit if we tense up and these guys right now are looking very relaxed. Yeah, look at this. Like This just looks like pretty smooth rowing. We got a little bit of discrepancy of the angle of entry sometimes, but this looks very good. See again, the body's very nicely in alignment. We're not seeing people do all sorts of crazy things. These guys' bodies look pretty good as well. We see a little bit more uh, discrepancy with the blade work from Sagatuck. But look at this, right? Look at, and look at this. This is something as well that I wanna mention. Look at this extraction, okay? Boom, we look, the blades come out. They're basically still fully squared here and they're almost disconnected from the water. And this is during a race, right? Then they, boom, feather, nice and high. Look at that. Look at the angle of the blade. When I'm talking parallel to the water, this is pretty freaking close to what we want to see. That allows the squaring up to occur without having to change the hand heights. And then you just have to worry about the timing at entry. Look at that. Very nice work. If anybody from Ship Lake is watching this, you guys are looking pretty solid. All right, we're going to come back here and we're going to look back at 5C. As we grow along, look at 5 seat. He's the guy I highlighted before, looking very scrunched down and looking like he's doing something kind of weird through the first part of the drive. Now, look at his body in here, right? Look at how much that body's kind of squirming around a little bit, right? Sit tall, lock that spine over the center line of the boat. That's gonna give you better connection. I'm not just saying he's the only problem in that boat because actually they're hanging in there very well, uh, despite some issues with blade work and body uh, mechanics, but 
you know, when you see something that's moving around like that, that's not what you want to have in your boat. You want that body positioning locked in, right? As tight as tight can be. And I don't mean tense, I mean just locked in. Everybody's doing the same thing and everybody's doing the right thing. All right, we've got uh, the Bifold Challenge Cup. We've got Molsey and Hanover from Germany. I don't know anything really about the Hanover crew, uh, except that they're from Germany. So they're probably going to be relatively quick, as they, uh, as they wouldn't have come if they were really slow. All right, so watching this as they uh, head out of the starting blocks, we're still pretty close to the start. I'm not sold on this um, German crew. To me, they look very impatient coming to the catch. So if we watch them, we're going to back it up here. Watch how they kind of rush through the catch motion. They're just trying to get up there for that next stroke. And consequently, look at this. This looks like a very short stroke. I mean, very short stroke. We want to make sure that that stroke stays long. Be very soft as we come to the catch. Let that boat run underneath us. If we're too keen on getting to the catch, then we're going to have issues because we're rushing in there. And we're going to throw so much weight on those foot plates that that's going to bring the speed of the boat very slow. Plus, if we look at the shin angles, look at stroke seat, look at two seat, or look at stroke seat, three seat, two seat. So look at three or two seat now and compare them. To, look at that. What's with two seat? Okay, look at that and look at this. How do we end up with two people that are so disparate on that drive? Look at that. That is no good because our power application is so different that we just do not want to freaking have that. We're going to have so much different force going down that boat. We're not unifying anything. Remember, the sum is greater. Uh, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Right? We want that sum, the whole, to be as big as possible. If each, each person here pulls two and a half, we want that total to be 12, not 10. Right? And right now, the way that they're going and they're all doing their own things, you're going to end up with that total being 10 or possibly even 9 or 8.5. So the more we can unify it, the more we get to that 12 number rather than the 10. So this Molsey crew is uh, winning significantly. But here's what I want to look at. Look at the extractions. And this is why, again, I like Molsey. They generally turn out pretty good crews. But this is why I'm not sold on them as a major threat right now to win this event although they might who knows watch the extraction points here with these blades as they come through notice there boom it sort of comes out but then it just lays down on the water we're looking at this one over here from 3c right look at that it just lays on the water there's no extraction there's no push down clear the blade make sure it's out above the water and if we don't do that, we are run that risk. See, look at this. It's already laying down. Boom. This one here is laying down a bit as well. Right? Look at that. See? We're going to see how this one is. Oh, that's just kind of laying down, laying down. That one extracted better. That guy's doing a better job. Because look at that. Look at that. But having said that, obviously, he's still at a uh, feathering position. He's a fully feathered position. Uh, you can't do this, right? Sorry, you just, you can't. You can't just lay the blades down on the water. That's dragging, that's extra, um, it's extra breaking on the boat. And to me, again, that's something that's an attention to detail. As you've got the race in control, you should be showing, look at that, look at that drag over here, right? Look at this drag by 2C. Blade just splat on the water. Oh, and he's not done, right? We're gonna drag it there. Look at this. You don't get the blades. You have to change the hand heights as you come up to the catch. That means that your boat is going to be uh, adjusting stability, adjusting balance at the least stable point of the stroke. Not good. This is why I'm not sold on these guys being uh, one of the top, top dogs. But they will be fast. Molsey always turns out very fast crews. I think these guys could be faster. They could be definitely sharper and cleaner. All right, so this is the uh, Visitor's Challenge Cup, men's fours, just after the start. And it looks like Brown University is already taking a very big lead. See, this is what I'm talking about right here, okay? When we have to change hand heights as we come to the catch, 
when the when the blades are in the water that's the most stable our boat is going to be when we do the extraction we have the opportunity to set that stability right from the moment of extraction and lock the handle heights in together if we don't do that and we end up having to make other changes see look at this already that boat is going off balance look at this off balance so now we end up with these blades way up in the air these blades smashing in look at the difference in hand heights here look at the difference in hand heights here now people would say oh that's that's because the boat is off balance i say oftentimes very often people look at things wrong people look at things in the exact wrong manner they say our hand heights were off because the boat was unbalanced and i say no the boat is unbalanced because the hand heights are off balance or are off so we need to lower these hands and raise these hands and boom like that that boat will become balanced okay maybe not quite like that but nine times out of ten making those changes will fix the issue okay it's like um it's like a guy that i used to coach and he always dragged his blades on the water they would extract and they wouldn't extract they would just lay down on the water and he dragged them on the water all, all through the recovery and i would tell him you need to get your blades off the water. You need to push those hands down, lift the blades off the water. And he said, oh, but I'm too unbalanced. I, I will get the blades off the water when my boat gets balanced. And I told him time and time again, he never end, ended up changing really. It was, it was very frustrating for me. But I always told him, no, you've got it backwards. When you start getting the blades off the water, your boat will start to become balanced. That's the reality. We will not get the result we want until we do the thing that will get us that result. It's not easy to do a lot of times because it, we have to go through a period where things get worse before they get better. But when we see stuff like this, that is a significant issue. Right? This is a significant issue right at the catch. We need to get those blades up, set everybody's hand heights here, and then keep that line straight all the way through. So if we look here... We want to say everybody's hand should be down basically on the thigh. But if we look at these hands here, that's a little bit higher, right? So there you go. And you can see, look at that splash. So he's still on the water. He's pushing that boat over. It's going to come down again on this side here, I bet. Look at this. Boom. Look at the hand heights again. Because we didn't set it up here, we had to make adjustments or had to, or we've lost that correct pathing. We've lost that correct pathing and nobody fixed it. And as long as that's the case, we're going to end up with a bad stroke. So this one here is maybe a little better. This guy rode it in. This guy rode it in. We didn't take the catch and then uh, push it away. But we want to make sure that those hand heights are level. And we want to do so much rowing and so much work at the correct level that no matter what, our brain can only possibly fathom going through that correct level cycle. All right, so now this uh, crew here is at the end of the race, but they're in uh, cruise control mode. But again, look at this. Look at how these blades are when they extract from the water. Bring it through. Look how deep that uh, bow seat blade is. Look at how deep that bow seat blade is. Ugh. Lower the hands, dude. You're going to get better power. You're going to have way less drag. Okay. Blades extract, and then splat, they just lay down on the water. Look at that. Okay. Look at that. And we're going to see this next one. There we go. Look at that. Splat. Just lay down on the water. So even though these guys are in cruise control mode, I think they could be better. I think they could be faster. And I would be, I would be concerned that, you know, when we come up against better crews, when we come up against, and I don't mean better than these guys, I mean better crews than what they're racing against, your margin of error is going to... See, look at that. Look at this. Here we go. And blades up. Boom. Look at this, everybody. You can know how to get those hands down. You know how to get those blades up in the air. Why not just get those blade shafts parallel to the water on your strokes? That's going to give you a nice, clean release. It's going to let that boat go away a little bit more. There you go. So I think that these guys here may encounter some crews, though. They give them uh, more problems as it goes on. Clearly, they're fast. If you win a race by cruise control uh, at Henley, you're a fast crew. Right? So I'm not saying they're bad. 
I'm just saying, I think they could be sharper. I think they could get a little bit more speed stuff. All right, so this is the Island Challenge Cup, which is the Women's University 8. I'm not sure which crews these are yet. This one here looks like it's going to be Durham. Uh, I haven't seen who this one is so or heard the name, so we will see how it goes, though. Uh, here we go. All right, so it's Nottingham University. So I have only watched about the first seven or eight strokes. I don't like the chaos that I see in this far boat, this turn boat. Their uh, Durham usually has decent crews, I think, but uh, I think they could just be more controlled. I think it could be smoother, more controlled, thinking of pressing the blades rather than heaving and yanking and pulling. Right? So when we watch it, you'll see a little bit of chaos over here. Right? And then you go and then look at this here right they kind of rush through look at how like chaotic and we see that in blade timing there was a lot of dis discrepancy on blade timing there right off those first few strokes these guys looked a little bit more relaxed off the start i don't know if that means that they've gone faster but i think these uh the durham crew spun their wheels a little bit so i'd like to see them just smooth it out just be a little more relaxed think of pressing it so it looks like durham's gonna win based on their starts here anyways, but we'll see how it continues. All right, so we're just gonna watch this here. Now we're coming down the waterway. These guys are hanging in good, so maybe they'll do okay. But we look at the blade work here on Durham, I think they could be much more together. Let's watch this here. So notice how they're, look at this, right? Look at this, the discrepancies, the differences in blade angles, the differences in some of the catch timing, the differences in how close the spoon is to the boat versus how far out it is on some of this stuff. See, look at that. Look at that difference in timing there. Right? Look at this. We got blades that are buried, blades that aren't buried. So even though they're winning, I'm not sold they're going to win this race, actually. They might, because these guys here are not um, the tightest either. But this here, look, that's not too bad. We got a bit of a gap there. See, we have different extraction times here. Look at this. So neither one of these crews is what I would be my my bet for the winner of the... Look at that. Oh, that's freaking... That's terrible. So I'm definitely not sold on these guys, even though they're winning. We will see how it goes. This needs to be tighter. This needs to be tighter. Everybody needs to um, be an abs absolute replication of the person in front of them. You cannot have this kind of discrepancy in and expect that you're going to win something like uh, Royal Henry. All right, so this is turning into a bit of a cracking race here. Um, what we're going to look at, though, is the far boat. It actually seems like they're hanging in there. They might pull this one out. But to me, they've got a bit of a swoop catch. They let the blades drop a little bit down, then they have to change the hand heights to swoop it up and then take the catch rather than just keeping the hands low, getting that nice good roll as they come straight across, holding a horizontal line, lifting the hands to place the blade in and jumping on the legs because that would allow that boat to have a better run better grab at the catch we wouldn't have uh, as many issues with stability so as we come through here see boom blades come down see look how close that is to the water we can see the shadow on the blade and now the hands have to go down to give room look at how the high that one went up right so when we do that and then look at this because we went up here by the time we're actually buried we're about this far we've gone all those frames there that we could have been in the water right here we're not in not in not in now we're getting in right that's four frames or so that we could have been pushing that boat along rather than hanging in the air doing nothing now over time that is going to um, add up that's going to add up when we do 2100 strokes or whatever it is that we would be doing in this race those extra four frames suddenly become 8,400 frames. And that's a lot of time. If I were to just sit here and press my frame forward button 8,400 times and watch how far they moved, that's a lot of distance that they have lost out by not being sharper at the catch. But what a great shot. Look at this. This is freaking two boats side by side. This is really, really good racing. I love watching this stuff. Okay, so. We are coming closer to the end now. Nottingham has moved past Durham, but here's what we're looking at. Look at the Durham blades here. Look at the Durham blades. See, look at that. We see that discrepancy. Look at that blade hanging in the air there. 
when you're in a neck and neck race, because these boats here Move. are very neck and neck race. Move. Yeah. Oh, I know that's right. Move. Sorry, my uh, child woke up, so he's sitting on my lap while I'm doing this. Here we go. This is going to be my last analysis because I have to go spend time with him. We can't let those blades hang like that. You're neck and neck. You've got to be dead on. You have to be sharp as that tack. And look at this. Look at Durham's blades again. Look at that. Look at that. That is terrible. These guys are tired. Look at this body. Look at this body. Yeah, that's not very good, is it, Max? Um, look at this here. They are freaking leaning way all over the place. Okay, there you go. Can you go see Mommy? Can you go see Mommy for a sec? So this, we can't have this when you're coming into the end of a neck and neck race. It just can't be done. All right, so Nottingham won over Durham in a very, very tight race. And uh, that's all I'm doing for this one right now. I will be back with more analysis later. And uh, there you go. If you like what you're hearing or you don't, feel free to uh, leave comments, likes or dislikes.